How's it going, everybody? Darren here, aka Dr. Dev, and welcome to another Learn to Program using C Sharp.net video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to program in C Sharp, or you're just looking for videos with tips, tricks, and best practices in the world of programming, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so that you don't miss anything. In this episode, I'll be teaching you guys about methods. Now, you'll most certainly hear the term function being used at some point instead of method, and although they are slightly different, as far as C-sharp is concerned, they are actually the same thing. Now, I personally tend to use the term function more than method, although please do bear in mind that method is the preferred term in C-sharp and in .NET. Okay, so with that out of the way, what are methods? Well, a method is a block of code to which you give a name. Whenever you want your application to execute that block of code, all you have to do is call the method by its name. Seems simple enough, right? Well, it is, but it's also extremely powerful. So let's take a look at a method in action. I'll go ahead and open up the solution we've been working on. And here we have the code we did, uh, we wrote from the last time where we were doing logical branches. I'm going to go ahead and delete all of that except for the read key because as usual, we do not want our application to end. Now, you might remember up here that for, I think it was from episode one or maybe episode two. I don't recall exactly which episode, but I told us, I told you guys that the main is our entry point for our application. And interestingly enough, I gave it a comment to say that this is a function. Now I'm going to rename that just because we want to try to be, uh, we want to conform to the best practices and method is the preferred term. So I'm going to try to change the, the word I use, although it doesn't matter too much, but main is a method. Now, in this case, it's a special kind of method because it's the entry point method that gets called when your application starts up, but it's a method nonetheless. We have defined a method, we've given it a name, it's called main, and it's got these braces to give it a scope, and all of the code we write within that scope gets executed whenever the main method gets called. So this is no different to what we're trying to achieve here today when we write our own methods. So let's go ahead and start writing our very own method. Now, before we do, there's something you need to be aware about when you're writing a method. A method must reside within a class in C Sharp. It must, and that means, so if we look at our class here, program, and we're going to talk about classes in a future video, probably maybe not the next video, but maybe the video after that, I'm not quite sure yet. But basically this class is an object which owns everything within it, right? So in this case, this class owns the main method. You can only get to the main method through the program class. And if we want to write our own methods, we need to make sure that they are inside of our class. So let's let's just reuse the program class that we currently have. Now we don't want to write our method inside of another method because that would be creating a, a local method, which we don't want to do. We want to create a completely independent method that is not local to any other one. So what we do is we basically make sure that we're within, within our, our class's braces but not within the braces of our main method. And then we'll just do a couple spaces down here just to separate it so we can clearly see the difference. And here's how a method looks, right? So this is the signature of a method. I'll write a comment here to say signature of a method. And it basically looks like this. Visibility followed by return type followed by name. I'll give that a capital. And then parameters. So this is the way it looks. This is when you're writing a method, this is the signature that you give it, which basically determines how the method looks and how it should behave. And if we apply this kind of signature to the main, for example, I can show you what's happening here. So visibility, you don't need to worry about this right now. I will talk about this in a lot more depth in a future video. But basically, there are four types of visibility keywords that we can give our classes and, and methods and, and so on. And they are public, protected, private and internal. Don't worry about what they are for now, guys. It's not re it's not necessary right now, but if you want to go and read up about it in your own time, by all means, go ahead. So when we're, when we're creating something, if we don't give it a visibility keyword, it will just default it to private. Okay, that's all you need to know. So in the case of our main method, we haven't actually given it a visibility keyword. We haven't given it a public, private, internal or protected. Now we could though, we could say public static void main, and it wouldn't actually change anything in this case, but we could. So visibility is the first one. It's optional. Now, what's not optional is return type. You have to say that when your method finish ex finishes executing, what type is it going to return? Is it going to return you an integer? Is it going to return you a double? Is it going to return you a string? Or in the case of main, void means it's not going to return you anything. It's not the kind of method where you expect to get anything back from it. You're not giving it input and expecting some output. You're just telling it to do something and, and then and that's it. So name, of course, in this case is main. And then parameters we define in parentheses. In this case, it's saying an array of strings called args. 
Don't worry about this too much, guys. I know this is confusing. I'm just trying to let you guys see how the signature is conformed to by the main method. But we're going to write a lot, much more simpler ones. And we can, we can go into more advanced topics later on when you guys are all more comfortable with programming. So don't be too frightened by it now. I know it's a bit overwhelming. And that's the way it is. And that's fun. That's the challenge of it all. But we're going to start simple. So let's do that now. Let's say I want to create a method which just prints out hello. Okay? Simple enough. What will I do? Well, first of all, I don't care about visibility, as I said. We'll talk about that later on, so I'll just ignore the visibility keyword. But the second thing is return type. If I wanted to just print out something, I don't really want it to give me anything back, right? I want this method to just do a console.write line. So I'll give it a void return type. I don't want you to give me anything back. Now we got to give it a name. So I'll give it a name. Let's say I'll call it print hello. Now, it is important that you guys follow the casing convention that I'm using here. You can see that I've created a name called print hello with a capital P and a capital H. And this is known as Pascal casing. And that is what MSDN says that you should use when you are creating method names. So just follow along with it, guys. It's in the C Sharp standards. I've always got a link in all of the descriptions of my videos. So take a look at that if you want to read up on it yourself. And of course, I'll talk about this once again in a future video. But for now, that's what we use when we're creating methods, Pascal casing. So actually, I just realized I need to also add the static keyword here to my method. I'm not going to talk about this at all for now, but just for the time being, you need to add the static keyword here if we want to be able to use the print hello method within our main method. OK, so just do it and we'll talk about it later. So the final thing after name is parameters. Now, we, I said earlier that parameters are, are passed in through parentheses like this. So in here, I can put my parameters in or whatever. What are parameters? Parameters are pieces of information that we can give to our method. So it can then use those pieces of information to do whatever it is that you, need, you want it to do. If you have a method that you say, for example, you want to make it add two numbers. Well, when you call it, it needs to know what numbers that it has to add, right? So, so as its parameters, you would give it two integers or something like that. We'll, we'll, I'll give you an example in, in a little bit. For now, we're going to make this one parameter list. So no parameters. And then we go ahead and give it a scope. And now, congratulations, we have created our very first method. At the moment, it's a blank method. It literally doesn't do anything. It returns void, doesn't take any parameters and doesn't do anything. But it's a method. And we can actually now call it print hello. So you can see print hello. There we go. And now you might notice, well, damn, that actually looks a lot similar to the console.read key. And that's because read key is a method on the console class, which is a .NET class. So we've created our own method in our own namespace. How cool is that? And now if I go down to my method and say console.write line, for example, and just say hello, now what's going to happen? So our application is going to start. The main method will be executed. The very first line is a call by name to the method we created. So what's going to happen is it's going to step into this, into this method that we've created and execute whatever's in here. And then when it finishes, because it's void, it doesn't return anything. It just does what you tell it to do and then it leaves. And then it's after that, it'll come out and then it'll do the console.read key. So let's take a look. And there you go. Hello. Prints out exactly as we would expect it to do. But now, instead of having to write this console.write line inside of our main method whenever we want to use it, we can just reuse this print hello wherever we want. So I can just copy this. And then, of course, I can say it like five times. And of course, in this case, it's going to print out hello five times, as you would expect it to do. But what if print hello had multiple things in here? You know, what if it had hello, uh, hey, or whatever? You know, it could have multiple lines of statements in here. And they're all going to be executed by just calling print hello once. So you can see the benefit of this. If I wanted this to happen five times without using methods, I would have to go ahead and actually write it in five times to do that. Like, isn't that crazy? We don't want to be doing that. That's ridiculous. And of course, this is a very simple example. Like most methods you create are going to be doing a lot more than just printing out two little lines. So keep that in mind. So now let's take this a step forward, shall we? Uh, I'll actually go ahead and delete all of these except for one. And let's say we create, I'll delete this as well. Now we want to have a look at a method which takes a parameter. So we can just modify the original one because why not? Let's say I want to create a method that I give as a parameter a string value 
and it's going to print out hello and then whatever the value is within that string. So if I pass it in a string which has the name Darren in it, for example, I want it to print out hello Darren. But if I give it a string that has the name Jonathan in it, I want it to print out hello Jonathan. Well, how do I do that? And it's actually super simple. Here's what it looks like. For the parameters, we, we just basically say in the signature that this print hello takes in a string and we give that string a name. So we'll just call it name like that. And now when I want to print line, I'll just do an interpolated string again. I wanted to print out hello name. And that's what I want. And that's all it is. As far as this method is concerned, it just takes in a name. It takes in a string, whatever that string may be. And then it just does a console.print line and it says hello plus whatever that value is. And that's all the method cares about. But now you can see we get some red squiggly lines up here saying there's no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter name of hello string. And that's because we're not actually passing it in anything. So let's let's just do that now. Let's create a string and we'll call it my name equals and then we'll just set it to Darren, right? Simple enough. And now I can just take my string variable and I'll just pass it into my print hello method. And now everything looks happy and everything works. So let's have a look at that. Start it up. And there we go. Hello, Darren. So now I've created a method which has a parameter. And I'm passing it pieces of information. So in this case, I'm passing it one piece of information, which is just a string that has some characters in it. But it's taking that string and doing something with it. One thing to be aware of here is that when we are calling the method we create, we don't have to pass in a variable which has the same name as the name that the method actually specifies. So in this case, our, our method is saying that it's expecting a string as a parameter, but we've called it name. It doesn't have to then, we don't up, up here, we don't have to pass it in as name. We can pass in anything we want so long as it's the correct type. Now, I don't even have to pass in a, a variable here. I can just pass in a hard-coded string. And the reason why this works is because my print hello just expects a string. It doesn't care about what the name of the variable is because as far as it's concerned, it's not actually dealing with variables. But down here, we give it a name so that when something calls this method and passes in a string, we want to be able to access that string and do something with it. So we just give it a local name, which is local just to this method. This name here is just local to this method. That's all. So that's why we can use it. We've given it, we've supplied it a value so that we can then take the information from it, as we've done here, and print it out. So let's go ahead and take a look at, I'll go ahead and actually delete this for now. Let's go ahead and take a look at using a method which actually returns us something. So I talked earlier about a method where you give it two numbers and it adds them. Let's, let's try that. So let's, using the signature that we've defined up here, so visibility will ignore, Return type name and parameters. So for a return type, let's say I want to create a method which takes in two integers, adds them together, and then returns me the value, right? So it returns me the sum of two integers. Well, of course, as we talked about in a previous video, when you're doing mathematical calculations on, on common types, the return value is going to be the same type. So if I'm doing a sum of two ints, I'm always going to get an int as the result. So in this case, we want our return type to be int. And then I'll give it a name and let's say add numbers. And of course, we're using Pascal casing again. And now for parameters, I'll say, I'll give it an int. And let's say I'll call this one first number. And then I'll do a comment to say that I'm going to give you a second parameter or another parameter. So then I'll say int again, second number. And now I give it some curly braces. And now you can see that unlike the last time when we had void for the return type, our, our method is actually throwing us an error. It's saying that not all code paths return a value. So basically what that's saying to us here is that it's possible to call this method, but nothing gets returned. And that's not allowed because we have to return an int. So if I just say return zero here, you'll see that it actually works again. But obviously that's not what we want to do. We want to do something meaningful. So what we do instead is we can create another int called result, or we'll call it sum, and its value is equal to first number, uh, first number plus second number. And then we just say return sum, like that. So this is the return keyword. This is where we say, do something with the variables you've taken in, right? So do something with them, put the sum into this variable called sum. And now, because this method expects a return, we go ahead and give it the variable that we've created back. 
So now when we call, uh, for example, this add numbers method, so if I just say up here, add numbers, oh, of course it needs to be static again, sorry. If I then say up here, add numbers, you can see that it's expecting two ints, and down here you can see it's expecting to give us an int back. So I can just pass in five, and then I do a comment, and then I can say 10, and that works. But at the moment, we're not doing anything with the result. We need to get the result back from it. So how do we do that? Well, that's pretty simple. We just create an integer called int sum, and then we say it's equal to add numbers 5 and 10. So now what we're saying is I'm creating an integer called sum, and it's going to get a value. But instead of me giving it a value of like 5 or 10 or whatever directly in my code here, it's going to get its value from whatever the result of this method call is. Now, this method call could give me so many different results. I could call many different methods, and I don't necessarily know exactly what I'm going to get back from them because the method is the one who does the calculation. So this is really cool. Now we're offloading responsibilities to other objects or other methods. So we're saying now that sum is going to be equal to whatever the result of add numbers is when, whenever we pass it in 5 and 10. So if we go to add numbers, we can see it just adds them and returns this. So actually, sum is going to have a value of 15. So let's, let's prove that. Console.write line. And we just print out sum. And let's start it up. 15. There you go. Now, I want to talk about something important here. You generally want to be writing methods which contain code that performs a very specific action. For example, if we're making a calculator, like I said, we would create methods like this. Add numbers. We would never expect add numbers to be doing multiplication right or to be doing adding and multiplying it should only be doing one thing it should just add something and give me back a result for example multiply numbers should just multiply and give me back a result we want to stay away from mixing the responsibilities of our methods up we never want to allow our methods to be responsible for doing multiple things generally speaking i should say there are obviously cases in which that's somewhat acceptable but that's what you want to be aiming for clear and concise purposes for all of your methods now you might be even wondering, why the hell would I write methods to do what it is that I want to do instead of just writing the code that I want for adding and subtracting and whatever right inside my main method? Why do I do this? Like, what's the purpose? Why can't I just say int sum equals 5 plus 10, right? Why can't I do that? In this case, it's a, probably a poor example, but we'll see later on in the series why. And the answer to that is for reusability. That's why you want to do it. Reusability is absolutely key. As soon as you have a block of code that you want to use more than once in your application, then you had best turn that block of code into a method. Because if you don't, if you instead rewrite that block of code for the second time, you'll then find yourself in a position where you have to maintain both of them separately. If you go back and fix a bug in the first one, you'll need to go back and fix a bug in the second one too. If your boss comes in and says, hey, I want you to change how this behaves a little bit, just make it do a little bit something a bit different, well, then you need to make that change in both places. This is maintenance hell, and we want to stay as far away from it as possible. Trust me, as somebody who's experienced maintenance hell firsthand professionally, it is not a nice place to be. So now that my rant was over, and although it was an important one, it was still a rant, let's go ahead and look at some more cool things or maybe some more quirks that we might want to be aware of. Let's go back to our add numbers method that we wrote. And instead of just always returning sum, let's say I will only return sum if sum is greater than 10, right? If sum, oh, I need to fix that curly brace. If sum is greater than 10, then return sum. Now you can see we've got this error again. Not all code paths return a value. So if you guys will remember from the last episode, we talked about logical branches. We said an if is one of the statements that we can use to create a branch in our codes, in our application's code. Right, So we will only ever execute this if this evaluates to true. So if my sum is greater than 10, then do this. Otherwise, just skip it. And the reason why the compiler is throwing us an error, so our application won't actually compile now. If we try to run, it just won't let us. The reason is, say, is that saying that is because there's no guarantee that this will be hit. There is absolutely no guarantee that sum is going to get returned. And because we've specified an int return type, we have to give it some sort of value back. So what we can do is as a just return as a default, we can just say return zero. Just return zero. Uh, what we've done here now is we've got two possible return uh, branches. We can basically return sum or we can return zero. But as soon as the return keyword gets executed, 
in your in your application or in your method as soon as a return gets executed the rest of the function doesn't get hit the rest of the method i should say doesn't get hit so let's let's step through this and i'll give you guys an example so let's say i pass in uh zero and five right so now i'll create an integer called sum which is equal to zero plus five so it'd be five and then the next line is if five is greater than 10 it won't be so we just skip and then we see return zero so now at this point our method knows it's going to exit from its actual execution and it's going to return a value of zero let's go and try a different example now let's say i pass in zero and 20. so i sum it together and i get 20. and now of course my sum is greater than 10. so i come in here and now because it sees a return keyword it's just going to return the sum value and it's never going to execute this so if i have loads of code down here let's say i have like console.write line let's just say i have like lol i don't know let's just say i have like a load of things here none of that will ever get executed ever if i hit this case if i return sum the rest of my co my code gets skipped so keep that in mind so I think the last thing that I want to talk about on you know, the topic of methods for now is the idea of chaining your method calls. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this just for the time being. Uh, and I'll delete that as well. So at the moment, we are starting our application and our main method gets called. And as soon as our main method gets called, it executes a piece of code which executes another method. So here we've got a, a, a two-piece chain. Our base, we've got a method which calls another method. And that can go down the logical tree as deep as you want it to go. You can, you can have a very high level method which calls one method, which calls another, which calls another, which calls another, and so on for as long as you want. And that can very quickly make your application extremely complicated. So you probably want to try your best not to be developing applications like that. But it's good to know that you can do it. Of course, it's a reasonable thing to do. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to do to have multiple nested method calls. But obviously bear in mind that there might be some implications down the line to coupling all of your methods like that. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's say I want every time I call my add numbers method, I want to actually print something to the console which just says now adding numbers or something like that, right? What would I do is I'll create a new method. I've got to give it a static keyword again just to make it work for now. And it's not going to return anything. It's just going to do something. It's not going to return me any value. And I'm going to call it print adding numbers and it doesn't take any parameters because it doesn't need any information and all it does is it just does a console.write line and it says now adding numbers something like that so what i can do is i can just copy its name and up here in the add numbers method i can just call it like that so now every time something in my application calls add numbers they are also going to be tightly coupled into printing to the console uh, adding numbers now adding numbers you cannot any longer call add numbers without always calling now adding numbers now that might be what you want as per your design spec in your application but you generally probably don't want to be doing this you want add numbers to just do something very simple it probably shouldn't be responsible for printing something to the console that should probably be the responsibility of something else but for now, for the purpose of what I'm trying to teach you guys, understand that you can actually have these kind of method chains or nested methods that call each other. So now when we actually start our application up, we'll see it. And there you go. So, it's, so it says now adding numbers. So this gets called from the print adding numbers method. And then once that exits, it'll actually start doing whatever we tell it to do in the add numbers method here. So it goes and creates the variable returns it once it returns it then we print it so you can see that this has already become a little bit on the side of complication you know what i mean it's a little bit complicated right now for at least for a beginner's level so that's basically it guys as always i hope you enjoyed the video i truly do hope that you learned something new if you're enjoying the series or if you just want to learn more in general please don't forget to give me a like comment and subscribe let me know how you feel the support would mean a lot to me and it will also give me a good indication as to whether or not these videos are useful to you guys as a content creator from my point of view i want to be making content that's actually helping people so if you find the video helpful please don't hesitate to let me know and of course i hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful day and i will see you again on the next video take care guys